This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You chose to hit play on this podcast today. Smart choice. Make another smart choice with Auto Quote Explorer to compare rates from multiple car insurance companies all at once. Try it at progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. One in three women and one in four men experience domestic abuse in their lifetime. And nearly half of survivors delay leaving because they can't bring their pets with them. Purina started the Purple Leash Project to help eliminate one of the many barriers domestic abuse survivors face. A lack of pet-friendly domestic violence shelters. Through the Purple Leash Project, Purina is helping to create more pet-friendly domestic violence shelters across the country. So abuse survivors and their pets can escape and heal together. Visit Purina.com slash purple to get involved. of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have three spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from October the 1st 2024 and story number one comes from Shannon. I'm the youngest of three siblings, older brother and older sister. We have all kind of always loved the spooky things, horror movies, Halloween etc. We grew up and still live in the Midwest in the US. I remember watching my first scary movie, Nightmare on Elm Street, at five years old with my brother and his friends. I remember playing Bloody Mary with my sister, making our own Ouija boards out of paper. I'm still not sure why or how we did this, going to graveyards in the middle of the night. All the silly and stupid things you could do as a kid. We were lucky to have a lot of family around us. However, my mom's family lived in Arkansas. We loved going down to visit my grandma and my grandpa when we could. And they came up to visit when they could. My grandpa, Dude Sloan, was so special to me. He was huge, like a bear. I just remember him being so strong. I could hang on his arm and he would lift me up and down. He taught me how to play checkers and rummy. Coffee and cookies were our special treat together. I still can't drink coffee without cream in it because of him. When I was 13, my grandpa had been struggling with his health and he passed away. He was the last of his four brothers. He and his brothers were very tight-knit. They all lived in the same town in Arkansas together. And three of them, including my grandpa, lived about 20 to 30 feet from each other. All in the same neighbourhood. The town actually changed the street they lived on to Sloan Street. They were all a bunch of characters. They loved to fish together, but loved even more just hanging out and being retired with each other. You could usually find them in my great uncle Ray's garage playing dominoes and drinking beer together. Before I knew he had passed away, I had a dream about him the night of. We were in some wooded area with a lake. My grandpa always wore coveralls and some type of plaid button down shirt. That's exactly what he was in when I saw him in the dream. We walked together and he said, Sis, it's about time for me to go. And then he kept walking and I saw three more figures up ahead and it got really bright and then I woke up. I knew that he had passed before my dad even told me that morning. We travelled down to Arkansas for the visitation and the funeral. The town they lived in is at the end of the Ozark mountain range and is known for its folk music. It's really a beautiful place. My grandpa passed away in July, and the day of the funeral it was a beautiful morning. The sun was shining bright, the sky was a perfect blue, and there were little white clouds in the sky. Think of the Toy Story background, that's how the sky looked. The funeral service started and there were so many people packed into the little yellow funeral home. About ten minutes into the funeral service a storm rolled in. There was the loudest thunder downpour of rain and gusts of wind that we had ever heard and then all of a sudden the power went out the entire funeral home was plunged into a deep dark blackness 
I will never forget the feeling of sharp claws grabbing my right arm and holding on. It turned out to be my sister, who had been sitting right next to me. Then, bam! The side double doors of the funeral home slammed wide open. Every single person jumped. Flower arrangements knocked over, vases spilled, rain and wind whipped into the funeral home. The funeral home director and pastor started to scramble to the back to grab flashlights. This was in 1998. No one had cell phones to provide any type of lighting. Other people hopped up to shut the doors so that not much rain was getting in. In the meantime, some candles had been lit in the back of the room. The wind started to die down. Now it was just a thunderstorm. More candles were lit. So finally we got on with the service. There was to be music, but since there wasn't any power, the lady sang a cappella, and it was the most beautiful two songs. I can still remember her voice to this day. After about 20 more minutes, the funeral was wrapping up. The minute the funeral director said, and that concludes our service, the lights came back on. We followed the funeral procession up the mountain for the burial. By the time we got to the gravesite, the sky was blue. The sun was shining. The fluffy little white clouds had returned. My mom always said that the four brothers were so excited to be together again, and they were so ornery that they just had to let everyone know, and that was their way of doing it. It has been so long since this happened, but I can remember it so well. I miss him so much, but it makes me laugh remembering it, because I know that he and his brothers were having the time of their lives together, scaring the crap out of everyone. Oh, this is such a lovely story. Again, it is always so difficult and so hard when we lose the ones we love. But there is something so heartwarming about your grandpa coming to see you the night that he passed. And you being able to see him in that dream going to join four other figures and walking off into the light together. That is really beautiful. And you know what? This has made me think about the fact that sibling relationships when they're good when sibling relationships are positive they're just so life affirming and wholesome and they bring so much joy to your life good sibling relationships and what a beautiful thing that your grandpa and his brothers they all lived around all lived together and they fished together and hung out and drank beer together and played dominoes like that's such a beautiful thing and I also think, you know what, <laughs> if I was dead and I had the chance to wreak some havoc, you know, get a bit of a thunderstorm going, get a bit of crazy apocalypse vibes going on in the funeral home, I'd be, I'd be absolutely rocking it. And I'd like to think that it was your granddad and his brothers all scaring the crap out of people from the great beyond. That's quite a beautiful thought. Today's episode is sponsored by Uncommon Goods. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. Holiday season is almost upon us, I know. It flies around every year and every year I try and be the best gift giver that I can be. I want to give gifts that spark joy and wonder and delight. I want people to look at the gifts that I get them and think that is exactly what I wanted. And Uncommon Goods can make the whole process less stressful because they have incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list. Uncommon Goods scour the globe for original, handmade and absolutely remarkable gifts. And I had a good look around the Uncommon Goods website and there's stuff on there that I really adored. For example, they have a book lover's advent calendar, which is the perfect gift for the book lover in your life. There are also gifts galore for the people in your life who love crafting or the people in your life who want to get into crafting. There are even a wealth of pickleball related gifts. Now I didn't know what pickleball was but now I do and I'm interested. When you shop at Uncommon Goods you are supporting artists and small independent businesses. The products are high quality, they are unique, they are often handmade and they even have gifts that you can personalise. And guess what? With every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a non-profit partner of your choice and they have donated more than $3 million to date, which is pretty incredible. 
To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash ghost stories. That's uncommongoods.com slash ghost stories for 15% off. Do not miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader, like that car riding right your tail. Or if you're tailgating right now, all those cars doubling as kitchens and living rooms are on Auto Trader too. Are you working out and listening to this ad at the same time? Well, multitasking pro, cars like the ones in the gym parking lot are for sale on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. Explaining football to the friend who's just there for the nachos? Hard tailgating from home like a pro with snacks and drinks everyone will love and easy win and with instacart helping deliver the snack time mvps to your door you're ready for the game in as fast as 30 minutes so you never miss a play or lose your seat on the couch or have to go head to head for the last chicken wing shop game day faves on instacart and enjoy zero dollar delivery fees on your first three grocery orders offer valid for a limited time other fees and terms apply And story number two comes from Anonymous. I'd like to start this off by saying that I myself am more of a sceptic, and to me this story is something strange more than anything. I had a bit of a wild imagination as a child, which explains the start of this story, but strangely enough, not the rest. When I was a child, my brother and I lived in an old house. I'm not sure exactly how old, but most certainly over a hundred years. We used to make up little stories about the house, none of which were based in any truth, but still entertaining for the small seven-year-olds that we were. Our home life wasn't the happiest, to say the least. We both dealt with a lot of dark feelings that we had to learn to deal with to this day. So I'm sure it won't surprise you when I say that this house always felt dark. Maybe it was the lack of natural light with the sun often being blocked by various different city buildings that surrounded our small terraced house. Many bad things happened in this house for many different reasons. One day after being sent to my room, for a reason I cannot recall anymore, but I remember feeling it was unfair, something happened that I remember even nearly 20 years later. I shared this room with my brother until we moved from the house just two years later, Our beds were separated by a fireplace that didn't work, and a wide array of boxes strewn about the place which belonged to neither of us. It was the middle of the day, with sunlight peeking in where it could from the two windows of our room, hitting objects wherever it could. After walking up the old stairs and down the corridor, marching dramatically as if I was being sentenced for a crime I didn't commit, although I most likely did something to warrant this, I felt a small amount of relief to be alone as I opened the old and heavy door to my room. The relief was short-lived though, as when I looked towards my bed, I saw something by its side. It was just a shadow, tall, around six foot, I would guess now that I'm older, shapeless almost and imposing, as still as I was, but most certainly there. I remember not screaming, not crying, just staying still and staring, frozen until I couldn't bear to watch the taller figure mirroring my stillness and silence any longer. 
I covered my eyes with my small hands and dropped to the floor. It felt like years until I built the courage to look again. When I did, there was nothing. This felt almost worse. Nothing to prove what I had seen. No reason for me to feel the way I did. No one to believe me. I went to sleep that night realising it wasn't only the things that I could see that I needed to fear anymore. I could hide from the things that I knew. But with this, I was lost. And once again scared of a place that should have been my home. Other things that you would imagine with an old house would happen throughout my years in that place. The usual bumps in the night and shadows that you could expect. Family have told me their stories years later of an old woman standing around, seemingly doing nothing else, content to just watch. There's so many other stories, but for now I'll focus on mine and try to keep this brief. A few years later, after moving out, the house was being prepared for sale. I went to help out with cleaning as we knew the owner. It felt almost cathartic to see the place gutted out and bare. No evidence of the things that had happened there. Scratches and marks painted over. Carpets with spilt alcohol removed. Climbing the stairs to our old bedroom, I acted on muscle memory alone. Although I was taller and braver than the girl who had run up these same stairs, scared. I was still her. Pushing the door like I had years before, I felt fear rather than relief. I stepped in and the air felt stuffy. Dust danced in the sunlight and the room lacked any furniture. I walked a few paces over to the old fireplace, going to collect some trinkets that had been left by the owner to drop in the box that stood behind me against the door when I stopped. To the left of the fireplace, on the floor, next to where my bed would have been in the past, lay a patch of black. With no carpet on the floor, it was plain, easy to see and no mistaking its existence. It almost looked like mould. It easily could have been, but with what I had seen years before, it meant something else to me. I stared for a few moments, frozen, once again as I had been years before. Remembering what I had come to do. Snapping out of my trance-like state, I moved to pick up the items from the fireplace mantle. With the items in hand, I turned my back on the stain. For lack of a better word and placed them gently into the box holding the door open. I left the house quickly after that, apologising to the owner and feigning illness, which he understood and gave me a sympathetic look for, understanding the situation with the little information that he had. I don't know what this is, or was, or even if I would want to know. It could all be simply a child's imagination, coping with her situation and trying to find some sort of explanation for her fear. I saw and heard many things as a child, and this wasn't the only instance, so again, it could be an overactive imagination. But I cannot explain the physical appearance of the stain, which was later acknowledged by the others who turned up to help with the cleaning. My family all have stories of seeing things, some of which ended up being scarily accurate. Warnings of illnesses of family members hours away with little to no contact. As I grow older, I have these experiences less, and when I do, I simply attribute them to stress. We truly should fear the living more than the dead. Oh, Anonymous, I could not agree more. It is the living that you need to watch out for and not the dead. I'm really sorry that your childhood was difficult and miserable and that you saw things that you shouldn't have seen and that you had experiences that you shouldn't have had. That is really horrible and I'm sorry that you had to experience that and there often is a theme with stories with paranormal stories especially when they center around a family or a household that in times of stress in times of negative energy in times where families are in crisis sometimes it can cause the manifestation of what seems like paranormal activity and anonymous you're totally right it could be a child's imagination it could be a trick of the light. It could be any number of things. But it is interesting that these things seem to show up more frequently when people in the house are going through some difficult times. Like, is this a separate 
entity that is attracted to the negative energy? Or is it the negative energy in the household that creates this entity? Or is it almost like a poltergeist experience? You know, poltergeists are often linked to teenagers and teenagers going through puberty. Is it a case where when you've got children in the household and they're under such stress and fear all the time that they project that and somehow, again, like a tulpa, create some sort of entity from that stress and fear? Whatever the answer is, it's terrifying. Whatever it is. And even if it is just imagination and a trick of the light and, you know, kids trying to make sense of a really horrible situation to be living in, it's still terrifying and the fact that there was a black stain on the floor exactly where this thing was standing over your bed that's a weird thing to think about and I don't mean to make this freakier than it probably already is for you anonymous but does that mean that thing was there on the regular that there's a stain on the floor was it that one time thing that you happened to see it at that time it happened to manifest at that time or was it happening regularly and you just didn't see it regularly? I'm sorry. Yeah, that definitely that definitely is making that situation worse. I'm glad for your sake that these things are happening to you less and less. Because I can't imagine it is comfortable to be experiencing these things. And our final story today comes from Brenna. I've encountered a number of things I cannot fully explain. But this is by far the most outrageous. I would not believe it if I had heard it from somebody else, to be perfectly honest. I worked at a summer camp in the United States, specifically Wisconsin, for six to seven years, primarily in leadership positions. We ran both day and overnight programs, and being on the leadership staff often meant working long hours to support them both. You get tired, and at night it can be easy for your eyes to play tricks on you. There was one particular week back in 2021 in which we were understaffed and stretched thin, Blame it on the fatigue, if you will. But things got weird. The first two incidents were tame. I was filling in as a counsellor, trading off a cabin of around eight, nine to ten-year-old girls with another member of staff. On the second day, one of the girls forgot her swim goggles. We were not far down the path from the cabin, so I sent her with a friend to go and retrieve them. The cabin has two doors, a solid inner door and an outer screen door. The inner door was open, allowing one to sort of see into the cabin through the tight mesh screen. The girls stopped when they got to the door and after a moment ran away screaming. They claimed to have seen the silhouette of a tall man sitting in a chair. They thought it was our camp director, but when they called out his name, the figure turned its head and appeared to have no face. I found nothing upon investigating the cabin and chalked it up to shadows playing tricks through the screen. I was later warned that there were sightings on the trail cams of a tall stranger wandering the camp early that morning. No one had been found, but staff should remain vigilant. Our door did not lock, so I pushed a metal garbage can in front of it for the rest of the week. It wouldn't stop anyone from getting in, but it was heavy and made lots of racket when it was moved. The second incident occurred midweek, when a co-worker approached to ask why I was mad at him. I had not seen or talked to him much since Sunday, so I was confused. He elaborated that he had crossed paths with me by the bathrooms at around 5am that morning. When he tried to greet me, I allegedly glared at him and stalked past, saying nothing. I was walking away from the direction of my cabin and bypassed the bathrooms, which he found odd. I had been asleep at 5am, in the cabin, with the barricaded trash can door and the girls. My co-counsellor could confirm that she had not heard me leave. This all culminated in the penultimate incident, the second to last night of the programme. I helped my co-counsellor get the girls to bed and went on break for the night. I was up until around 11pm in the main office, catching up on paperwork, when I finally decided to call it a night. I exited the office, which is situated on the edge of a large field. It must have been a full moon or close to it, because it was one of those nights where you did not need a flashlight in order to see. Despite my years there, camp is always a little spooky at night, 
and I prefer to walk around in the dark. I feel less exposed in the dark and was not thrilled to cut across the illuminated field. As I began to make my way, I observed a deer across the field to my right side, standing close to the tree line. I paused to watch and determine if there were more of them nearby. As I stopped to watch, the deer snapped its head towards me, alert. What happened next still feels unbelievable and almost like it happened to someone else. This deer, if it was one, reared up onto its hind legs and abruptly charged full tilt on two legs towards the darkened back half of the field away from me. All complex thought processes shut down in my brain as it entered flight mode. I bolted back to the office, locked myself in, sat down in a computer chair, swivelled towards the front window and watched. I'm not certain how long I sat vigilant in the dark, my eyes combing the field beyond the window for further signs of movement. Eventually, my co-counselor texted to ask if everything was okay. I realised that it was almost midnight and told her I would be back, but I saw something incredibly disturbing and to please wait up for me. I exited out of the back door this time and sprinted for the cabin. Upon arrival back, my co-worker was obviously curious about what disturbing thing had kept me. As I began to describe to her what had happened... In a flood of rushed whispers, she abruptly grabbed my shoulders and hissed, I saw the same thing last summer. Combined with other stories, sightings and experiences other counsellors have had around the camp, many of us are convinced that something shares the space with us. None of us are quite certain what, but whatever it is cannot be human and seems to have a habit of mimicking other people or animals. So let's be clear here. Okay, my knowledge on deer is limited, but I did look this up and apparently it is incredibly uncommon for deer to walk on their hind legs. So they will get on their hind legs in order to uh, reach food and they will get on their hind legs when males are scrapping, right, when they're fighting. But they will not generally be strolling around or running around at high speed on their hind legs. And there are diseases that deer can get, like a chronic wasting disease that can make them behave very strangely. But I did not read anywhere diseases that make deer run around on their hind legs. However, this situation, this phenomenon, is something that comes up quite regularly in paranormal conversations. And it scares me, frankly. I don't like the idea of animals doing things they're not meant to be doing. And there is a possibility that this is a thing that exists in Native American culture that I've spoken about on the podcast before and I have been asked not to use the name of this thing on the podcast because in Native American culture it is considered a very bad idea to use the name of this entity so I'm not going to use the term but you all know what I'm talking about okay because clearly there was something there because on the trail cams there was a tall stranger wandering the camp in the early hours of the morning. So that definitely happened. Is it a, is it a weird coincidence that these wee girls saw a tall man sitting in, in the cabin? I don't think that it is. Is it a weird coincidence that one of your co-workers saw a version of you strolling around into the wilderness, into the darkness? I don't, I don't think that it is a coincidence. This feels like something that is able to mimic other people or animals or whatever. Like you said, this feels like something that is able to move around in different guises and I don't I don't fucking like it and from what I know of American camps they're usually in like remote rural places right which is exactly where these type of entities would be knocking around oh this that's really scary Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Shannon, Anonymous and Brenna for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from October the 1st, 2024. And if you are desperate to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to Podcast at gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you would like some extra content, you can subscribe to the Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash Stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note i shall see you next time 
This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Fiscally responsible, financial geniuses, monetary magicians. These are things people say about drivers who switch their car insurance to Progressive and save hundreds. Visit Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states or situations.